let me do this derivation. And in fact, the derivation that I do will look very similar to the derivation that's done here, although not exactly the same for two reasons. One, I will eschew the use of the term relativistic mass because I won't use that. And two, um, I'll try to simplify the setup a little bit uh, compared to the exact setup that Feynman uses. So this is the uh, lecture on derivation of relativistic momentum. And there are a couple different places from which you can get at this new idea. Uh, one of them could be the simple recognition that special relativity is paradigm shifting discovery. So fully understanding and internalizing special relativity should make you question all the formulas you have seen because all the formulas you have seen in mechanics so far didn't include this uh, paradigm shifting idea. So they could have been right by accident as uh, some formulas were, especially in electromagnetism. And, um, but more often than not, they would be wrong. They would be what we call low speed approximations to the correct expression. And uh, momentum is same. So you are used to seeing that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And this made the perfect sense. In uh, physics 4A, we even related this to Newton's laws and you can use Newton's third law to show that momentum is conserved and all that stuff. Now, you can actually, through consideration of a rather simple situation, you can see that this formula cannot really hold anymore. Uh, let me show you, let me present one such simple situation. So let me describe two balls of equal mass, uh, ball A and B. Uh, let me say they are equal mass and they collide elastically. So whenever they collide, the uh, total kinetic energy is conserved. Okay. And I'm going to have them approaching each other at the same speed. Um, let me call that free knot and bounce from each other. Then you can kind of imagine what they would do. They would approach, bounce, and then bounce out of uh, at the same speed that they came in with. It's elastic collision. So they collide here. And then after the collision, they go back. As simple as we can make it. And just this situation by itself, um, doesn't, it's not complex enough for us to start questioning this non-relativistic expression. And that would be the case, even if we started insisting, oh, this speed is really large. Let's say this is getting to be comparable to speed of light. Even then, uh, this is setup is just so symmetric that yeah, if whatever speed they are at, 90% speed of light, 99% of speed, speed of light, they would come bounce and then bounce out. Like um, They're so symmetric that there's no other way it could be. So let me modify it a little bit with a particular goal in mind. My goal in mind is I want to mix. I want to mix an object that can only be described with a relativistic consideration in mind with another object that's moving at low enough speed that I don't need to consider relativity. So um, that's where this setup is too simplistic. It's lacking something because either they both have to be relativistic or they both have to be non-relativistic. Now, one way I can tweak this interaction to introduce relativity to only one of the two interacting objects is to give some of them, give one of them a sideways motion. Uh, you can imagine me doing that by maybe this is a charged particle, a proton, and I place it in a region of electric field so that as it's uh, moving downward, it's also getting accelerated to the right with electric field. So at some point it gains a very large uh, transverse or horizontal uh, velocity and momentum. And somehow I still <laughs> arrange for the collision so that they collide down here. Um, now, if you imagine that that kind of situation is doable, not just in 
thought and theory, but in actual practical experiment, then this is the setup that I have designed. So the particle A is coming off from site. And I am going to say that we have done our best not to change the vertical component of motion. So this is coming in with some relativistic speed. Let me call it VA colliding with a B and then uh, moving off. And the way the arrangement works out, it should be the same relativistic speed of VA. Horizontally, momentum should be conserved. So there's no reason any of the horizontal component of velocity should change. Let me call that V. And vertically, it's gonna come in with some vertical speed. Let me call it VA perpendicular, and it should go out with VA perpendicular. Now, if you think through this setup, I hope something makes you realize that um, simply saying that it, this uh, vertical component remains the same as V0 for all values of VA, that becomes untenable. It, you cannot hold on to that anymore because from geometry, VA is equal to square root of V squared plus VA perpendicular squared. It's just spatial geometry. It doesn't involve any special relativity. <laughs> geometry still, Euclidean geometry still works in special relativity. You can see that for high enough value of V, um, if we insist that VA perpendicular will remain as this, then at some point this will exceed the speed of light C, even for value of V that's less than speed of light C. And that's a contradiction, you can't have that. So when particle A is moving at relativistic speeds, you are going to have a situation where this perpendicular component of velocity is not going to be equal to this velocity. Now, I would like to still insist that for this situation, that we still hold on to momentum conservation. That is, we still say that, um, that in this interaction, in this momentum conserving interaction, that we can still somehow say that the uh, perpendicular component of um, A's momentum is equal to the, the B's momentum um, incoming. Uh, you know what I mean, the magnitudes are the same, but in terms of <laughs> directions and whatnot, you'd have to arrange it, but the, the, the magnitudes are the same. And before we did the low speed approximation, this is what we would have said. We would have said for the low speed approximation, we would have said, well, mass times the velocity in that direction, VA perpendicular is equal to mass times of V naught. That I hope it looks familiar. Now, what we are being forced to, to say is that for relativistic case, this uh, particular expression can no longer hold because at high enough speeds of VA, this equality won't hold anymore. So, so we need to figure out, okay, then what modification do we need to make in order to make this work? Let me make this a suggestion. I am going to suggest that uh, what we need is a change to the expression for momentum. So what we are still going to hold on to is we are going to hold on to the idea of conservation of momentum, that for this collision to work out and all the symmetries to be observed, what we do need to hold on to is that the, this perpendicular component of momentum for A is still equally magnitude to the momentum for B. So that after they collide and they bounce, the net momentum hasn't changed. What I am willing to consider, uh, reconsider, is that this is the expression for momentum. Now for the low speed side, I'll, I'll just keep to that. I don't have to change that. 
But for the relativistic speed side, I need to include a possibility for uh, this expression not quite being right. So what I'm going to do is in order to say these two sides are equal to each other, I'm going to say, all right, there should be some function that describes how my momentum needs to be changed. And this function is going to be function of speed VA. That seems reasonable to me just because um, that's the parameter that determines if we are in a relativistic case or not. So, so this is the only thing we are assuming that um, we have some kind of relativistic expression. And our goal in the next uh, five minutes or so is figuring out what this expression is. Now, I do need to bring in an additional tool because, um, you know, if you're simply looking at this picture, uh, like I don't know what I can, like I don't know what else <laughs> there is I can do. Um, I can use the principle of relativity in that if this is an interaction that takes place, I can analyze it from a point of view of an observer who's moving to the right at speed V. Um, from the point of view of that, that observer, it's still the same interaction, but some of the parameters will change in a way that uh, helps me get at what this uh, modification to relativistic momentum is. So uh, let me draw out a picture for what that looks like. Um, so if uh, this observer is moving to right at speed V, same V as the horizontal component of A's velocity, then what I will have is, so in that observer's view down here, A will be just coming down at some speed VA perpendicular prime. This is my frame S prime. And after the collision, it'll bounce back at the same speed, VA perpendicular prime. And now ball B will look like it's uh, approaching the observer at speed V uh, horizontally. So the ball B should look like this. Uh, it'll collide with the A here and it'll come in with some speed VB prime and then bounce out at the same speed VB prime. And uh, vertically it'll be moving at some speed. Um, I want to call it uh, VB be perpendicular prime because I have a feeling that it's probably not going to be the same as V naught. So as we compare the picture in my initial frame, frame S, and compare it in the new frame, frame S prime, we can see, um, uh, uh, we can <laughs> glean some information. Now, this is where I actually needed to look up and copy down some formula because it looks like I'm, uh, it involves me changing my reference frame. And as I change my reference fr frame, the primary quantity I'm interested in is the speeds or the velocities. And the velocity is one thing that I've taken no effort to, to memorize the transformation rules of. So I need to look it up in the textbook and copy it down properly so that I can um, use it for this uh, next step of derivation here. So let me go to the velo relativistic velocity transformation section. And once I'm there, I'll copy down what I need and then I'll finish the derivation here. I do have to say this, uh, going through this exercise uh, made me appre appreciate these formulas more, which I've been really neglecting um, because I thought, hey, I never use that. I guess uh, one place I, where I should use it is actually here. So, um, so velocity transformations. Um, yeah, so this is the formula. Now I do want to uh, caution you a little bit here which is that, um, so this gives the formulas for transformation of velocities parallel to the movement of frame, but the velocities that I'm interested in are perpendicular to the movement of the frame. So uh, I will copy down that formula, but just to be mindful that I probably won't be using this one so much. So U parallel is equal to u parallel prime plus v over one plus v, that's the speed of the frame, u parallel prime over c squared 
the formula I will need more is this one that describes the one of the perpendicular components. I can use the one for y or z. They are basically the same uh, for the particular perpendicular axis. So u uh, perpendicular is equal to um, u perpendicular prime divided by gamma, again divided by one plus v, and I have to be careful here. This is u parallel, u parallel prime over c squared. Okay, I think that's all the formulas I need. Um, looking at it here, so, it doesn't quite do the thing that I wanted to do because I'm starting out from my S frame and I want to uh, uh, transform my S frame velocities into S prime frame. Uh, this is telling me how to transform from primed coordinate uh, velocities to the unprimed velocities. And um, to get the formula, to get the expression for the prime velocity, so to get the reverse transformation, there's actually uh, two different ways you can go about it. One way is you can just algebraically solve for these. these. It's not actually that hard. You can just do it. <laughs> you will <laughs> see that uh, it works out. Um, another thing you can do that um, I find better is you can kind of imagine reversing the prime then unprimed frames then really what you are doing is you are changing this uh, v into minus v because from s prime frame, this uh, s frame is moving to left at speed v. So I can do this uh, simple rewrite. I'm gonna just swap the unprimed ones with the prime and wherever I see v, I'm gonna replace it with the minus v. So u uh, parallel prime is equal to u parallel, no prime, minus v divided by one minus v u parallel divided by c squared. And then the, for the perpendicular component, u perpendicular prime is equal to u perpendicular, no prime divided by gamma. Uh, with the gamma, there's a factor of v squared. So replacing v with the minus v doesn't change anything divided by one minus v u parallel, uh, no prime, divided by c squared. So let me use these formulas to uh, transform my velocities and uh, we write the transformed version of the velocities here. So, um, so I'm gonna imagine starting out with this and write out what uh, this, uh, the transformed perpendicular velocity would be. Uh, using this formula here, it's gonna be the, the u perpendicular, that's my VA uh, perpendicular, divided by gamma. And I think I can just use gamma with no notation. My gamma, whenever I write it down, it'll mean one over square root of one minus V squared over C squared with this V in mind. So divide by gamma divided by one minus same v, and then um, u parallels, uh, oh, that's a v. So one minus v squared, v squared over c squared. And I think I can actually simplify this a little bit more because what I have here is one divided by one minus v squared over c squared. And that's just the gamma squared. So I have, gamma squared times V divided by gamma. So all of that simplifies into gamma VA perpendicular. Oh, okay, so that's my transformed velocity here, going from here to here, just to add the factor of, or multiply the factor of gamma. Uh, let me do that for VB um, perpendicular. Uh, I guess, uh, let me write that down here. So I'm transforming uh, this velocity, V0, into this perpendicular component. And so uh, plug in the numbers, <laughs> my um, U perpendicular was V0, V0 divided by, it's the same gamma, it refers to the, the speed of the reference frame, divided by one minus V 
oh, oh, but u parallel in this case is zero. So it's gonna be just uh, uh, the, the, what I'm subtracting by is zero. So what I'm dividing by is one, so I'm not really dividing by anything. So, good. So these are the two transformed velocities in my S prime frame that I think will be useful in some sense. Um, now, if you want to make a sense of these formulas that I've written down, one thing you can do is um, look at the transformation of the horizontal component of the velocity. Um, if uh, it all works out the way you intuitively expect it, then when you transform the horizontal component using this formula, it should uh, reduce down to zero. And I think you will see that. And, um, and here the horizontal component should uh, work out to be V. Um, so with that, I can, write down my relativistic momentum conservation expression in two different ways. I've already written one expression. This is in frame S and I can uh, write a similar expression, but in frame S prime. So in frame S prime, what I ought to have is I have this uh, A that's coming in and colliding and going out. So on the left-hand side, I should have m VA perpendicular prime, and this is moving at slow enough speed that I can treat it non-relativistically, leave it alone. And on the right-hand side, for the expression of the momentum of B, I should treat that relativistically, meaning I should have an expression for this, some modification factor that depends on VB times mass times, the perpendicular uh, component of velocity, Vb perpendicular prime. And I can simplify this expression quite a bit by recognizing one from symmetry. This Vb prime should be equal to Va. I think if it's any other way, it doesn't make sense because you can almost kind of imagine taking this picture rotating it around and you would get the picture down here. So from symmetry, these two um, should have the same magnitude. So this is a function f of Va and f of Vb, it's the same function of same parameter. I'll just settle on Va. So that's one. Um, and the, the left-hand side, let me plug in this expression here. So it's uh, m times this quantity here. Uh, gamma Va perpendicular is equal to F times M and Vb prime was uh, V naught divided by gamma. Okay, uh, let me just erase the stuff down here to make a little more room for my remaining algebra. So let me look at these uh, two equations and see if I can Simplify it somehow, equation one and equation two. See if I can simplify it somehow. And my goal really is to solve for this unknown modification factor that we somehow need to make momentum work right in relativistic conditions. So, um, so let me rewrite, uh, write down clean version of these equations canceling out things that I can cancel out. Masses I can just cancel out. So, and I'll just write F as uh, just F, F, function of speed. Uh, M canceled out, so VA perpendicular is equal to V naught two. Um, uh, masses canceled out. And let me collect the gamma on the same side. So I'm gonna collect the gamma on, from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So gamma squared Va perpendicular is equal to um, F V naught. Okay, um, I guess I can just to do what? Linear combination, divide the uh, top by bottom. <laughs> many different ways of simplifying this expression. Whichever way you do it, it turns out to be um, numerator, <laughs> the modification function, 
divided by the denominator gamma squared is equal to one over the modification function. And um, what I did was in the process uh, cancel out these variables. So what you finally end up with is this, the function that you have to modify with um, of VA um, squared is equal to gamma squared, or that this function that you have to modify with is gamma. And there's a bit of um, thing that I'm kind of um, hand-waving, not addressing quite thoroughly, is that, um, so what I want to say is momentum is equal to gamma mv, and for that to work, technically, this thing here, instead of being VA, it should be V. And I will chuck that up to the approximations that I'm doing in treating uh, this as non-relativistic, fully non-relativistic, and this as relativistic. And um, for this comparison to work well, this should be very, very relativistic, and this should be very, very non-relativistic. And all of that really amounts to me saying that uh, this is much less than VA, and I can say V is approximately VA. And at some level, this approximately becomes equal, and, um, and I can justify this leading to this. So this is the derivation of relativistic momentum without without really, um, or with the minimal assumptions as possible. And the minimal assumptions are, one, that momentum is conserved, that uh, uh, even though special relativity changed a lot of things, the main idea that momentum is conserved, that didn't change. So we are holding on to that. And two, um, we are continuing to hold on to the the transformations derived in special relativity, which were the, the relativistic velocity transformation principles, uh, relativistic velocity transformation rules that I copied earlier and used. So, so from the idea of conservation of momentum and relativistic velocity transformation, we can figure out that, yeah, momentum does need to have this factor gamma in order to in order for our conservation of momentum to hold in relativistic cases. And that's the new expression for momentum we'll start using from now on. And everything else that we redrive relies on this expression. And you know, if you want to avoid this 30 minute derivation, you can just memorize this and use that. 